So if you're a rocketry fan and you want to build a rocket that might break some records, but you don't have access to the thousands of dollars of funds you would need in order to do that, well, then this is the video for you. There's a category of rockets called water rockets, which you could build with things that are in your own home. So what are the records and what would you have to do to break them? There's a group called Water Rocketry Achievements, which is specifically taking the task of documenting all the records in the water rocketry community. So if you're interested in breaking one of these records, I would recommend to peruse their page a little bit and see what's available. But before we get into that, maybe we should discuss a little bit about what is a water rocket and how do they work? In its simplest form, a water rocket is just a rocket which uses water as its propellant. In order to build a water rocket, you typically take a soft drink bottle or a water bottle and you fill it a little bit with water and then you pressurize the rest of the air inside of the container to something like a couple of bar. And then what will happen is as soon as you open the lid or have some sort of mechanism that releases the water, the pressure from the air will push the water out of the neck of the bottle and that essentially creates your thrust. This is not a very super energetic process though, so you typically don't get too much thrust out of this and altitudes of just a couple of meters are usually typical. So that seems simple enough. I mean, how hard can it be? Let's break some of those records. But first we need to know what the records are. So without further ado, let's get into some of the water rocketry records that are available for you to break. The first category of water rocketry records that may be the easiest for an amateur to break would be the Class D design. And this is just a design that utilizes a plastic bottle for the pressure vessel and it can't use any uh, special fiber wrapping around the vessel to make it handle more pressure. So just a plastic water bottle. Of course, this makes this category a bit competitive because anyone can build this type of rocket, but with a little bit of engineering expertise, you might be able to break the record that currently stands. The record for the highest class D water rocket is 127 meters, held by Kevin Colville for his Valkyrie 3 rocket. The Valkyrie 3's design relied on a 1.25 liter bottle, which was pressurized to about 7 bar. And it also used about 0.42 liters of water as its propellant. What led to the Valkyrie 3's stellar performance was actually its really low drag ratio. This record has stood for almost 5 years, so be warned if you're looking to challenge it. But maybe Class D is not your thing. Let's talk about some of the other records that you might be able to break. If you're looking to get up to more pressures than the 7 bar that's in a plastic bottle, Maybe you're more interested in the Class A category of water rocketry records. Here you can use any sort of fiber or reinforcement in order to really get those pressures inside your rocket up. Getting to higher pressures inside of the water rocket will improve the performance of the rocket because it increases the speed at which the water is forced through the neck of the bottle. This means you're going to have more thrust for the same amount of water that you're using. Although you have to keep in mind that the more pressure that you put inside of the bottle, the thicker you're going to have to make your walls. So it does increase your mass a little bit. The Class A record is probably the most competitive record that we're going to talk about. This record was held by a group called US Water Rockets from 2007 all the way until 2015, so it was a very long standing record. This was held by a rocket called the X-12, which was able to reach an altitude of 630 meters. And it could do this because it had a carbon fiber reinforced plastic design, which allowed them to get to really high pressures. US Water Rockets held the record until 2015. What happened in 2015? There was an ambitious university group out of the University of Cape Town that was able to beat this record set by US Water Rockets uh, and reach an altitude of 830 meters. Again, they utilize a CFRP tube, but they added some extra rubber reinforcement on the inside in order to reach chamber pressures which went above 100 bar. At these pressures, the CFRP walls stop acting like walls and kind of become permeable to little molecules like water. And so in order to prevent water molecules from leaking, through the walls of the tank, they basically had to innovate this rubber design with which they would put inside of the tank to prevent this from happening. They also included a lot of other innovations inside of this rocket in order to optimize the aerodynamics and the nozzle component of the vehicle to get them to this really high altitude. And it's really amazing to think that only water got them all the way up to almost a kilometer in the air. To date, this is the official world record that's recognized by the Water Rockets Achievement page. However, it's not actually the highest water rocket that's been launched in the world. It turns out that the Water Rocket Achievements page has a specific rule set for how you can apply to be a record breaker, and there's basically two rules that you essentially need to follow. Number one, you have to carry a video recording device up to the altitude that you launch your rocket to. 
And number two, you have to perform two successive flights within two hours of each other. Like the rest of the record-breaking rockets in the Class A category, it also utilized a CFRP structure. And with this, they were able to get a chamber pressure of 79 bar. And with two liters of water and a little bit of shampoo, they are able to get the rocket to a record height of 961 meters. And the reason why this didn't count as an official world record is because they didn't actually launch that rocket again two hours later. Instead, they actually launched it again the next day. So, a bit of a technicality, but, uh, okay. But why do they put shampoo into the rocket? I mean, that's kind of weird. Well, the reason for this is actually one optimization technique that they were using in order to increase the performance of the vehicle. So it turns out that when you put shampoo into the water, it kind of foams up the water, which means that there's less density of water that's coming out of the nozzle. And this is helpful because it actually extends the length of the thrust phase and allows you to get more overall impulse. And that's basically what this vehicle is doing. There's actually one record that isn't even officially clinched, and this is in the Class B category. Class B just means that you need to have a rocket with multiple stages. So instead of it just being one rocket that you pressurize and then let it go, it's gonna be two stages. So you have one on the bottom, and then once that one is finished, you somehow have to start another stage. And this is a bit more complicated in terms of design, but you don't have to use complicated mechanisms to do this. You could still just use some plastic water bottles. And I don't know, you have to be a bit innovative. <laughs> Right now the unofficial record is at 323 meters, uh, but it's again unofficial, so technically all you have to do is come up with a design that goes slightly higher than that and that follows the rules. And then boom, you can be on the record page too. I highly recommend that you go check out the World Rocketry Achievements page if you are interested in designing a rocket that will break one of these records. So what are you waiting for? Get building your water rocket today. And remember, to keep expanding your horizons. So it turns out that when you put shampoo into the water, it actually foams up the propellant as it goes out of the nozzle, which means that the water will stay longer inside of the bottle, which means it extends the length of the burn. And this is really good. I'm calling it a burn, but it's not really a burn. I mean, it's water, so it's not burning. <laughs> it extends the length of the thrust phase, that's what I should say. Yeah, so shampoo. Who would have thought shampoo can help you with rockets?